My fellow renegades, I'm coming for the practice of opening windows. It's war. What did opening windows do to me? A lot of things, actually. Am I really going to systematically dismantle the age-old, time-tested practice of opening windows? Apparently, I am. Apparently, this is what my life has become, and I think I like it. Bringing fresh air into your home is essential. Studies show that outdoor air is usually much lower in VOCs, sometimes up to a hundred times lower than indoor air. So how do you make use of that cleaner outdoor air? Luften, the German practice of opening windows for 15 to 30 minutes a day to exchange indoor and outdoor air, is widely recommended, especially in Germany where it's considered essential for indoor air quality. Its purpose is to replace a significant portion of stale air with fresh air, reducing moisture while minimizing heat loss. In theory, it's a simple and effective solution. And for someone who's relatively healthy, living in a home with strong natural airflow, minimal off-gassing materials, no mold issues, and on a day that isn't humid, it can work fine. But for most people in most homes, Luften doesn't bring in nearly enough fresh air to meaningfully dilute indoor pollutants. Just 30 minutes a day is absolutely not enough, especially for sensitive individuals and people living in tightly built homes with off-gassing materials or mold problems, like I said. And let me be straight with you, based on my experience traveling around the US testing homes, plus what housing studies show, most homes have a hidden mold problem. That mold issue doesn't take a break during the 23 and a half hours a day you're not luftening. And off-gassing, I mean, that happens continuously too. So if you're like most of my viewers and you have above average intelligence and are like really curious, you might be asking yourself this, what if you try to compensate by leaving windows open for longer? Well, that often comes with its own problems, throwing off temperature and humidity, which can lead to discomfort, mold growth, and higher energy bills. I've learned that very pleasant lesson firsthand many times, but most recently when I moved into this new build here in Northern Colorado. The moment we walked in, the air was thick with the chemical smells of cheap OSB, new carpet, and vinyl flooring. And to make matters worse, we had just bought new furniture. Its polyurethane foam filled the house with this strong, almost cheesy odor. Both my fiance and I were getting headaches. So we opened the windows, not just for short Luften bursts, because that hardly helped, but as much as we could just to try to flush the VOCs out. And the problems were that airflow through the windows was inconsistent. Upstairs, barely any air came in, so that didn't help at all. Downstairs, a lot of air streamed in, which actually made a huge difference in reducing the VOCs. But the problem was that it also made the downstairs freezing cold as it was February. And because our thermostat was downstairs, cold air from the open windows made the system overcompensating, overheating the upstairs while leaving us cold downstairs. So we had to shut the windows and almost immediately the smell returned. See, but that's just one version of the issue with opening windows. If it had been summer in the Eastern US, it would have made it hot and humid instead, which not only feels miserable, but also creates the perfect conditions for mold growth, as I've covered in previous videos like this one, linked in the description as always. Listen closely to this, okay? Opening windows only lowers indoor humidity if outdoor humidity is lower than indoor right? Germany is relatively mild in terms of humidity. I'm not, not saying they get no humid days, but much of the rest of the world is more humid than Germany, especially a lot of the US, like I've discussed in past videos. So that's the real issue with opening windows. If enough air enters to actually dilute indoor pollutants, it often completely disrupts your home's temperature and humidity. But if you actually follow Luften traditionally and only open windows for a short time each day, it simply doesn't provide enough fresh air to meaningfully dilute indoor pollutants, especially for people with biotoxin illness, and especially in these increasingly tightly built modern homes that trap indoor pollutants like never before. When I'm making each of these videos, I try to predict what are you guys gonna be skeptical about? What are you guys gonna not understand and what questions are you gonna ask? And I think some of you might be thinking, hey, when I open my windows, my home doesn't get too hot, cold, or humid, so isn't it a good strategy? 
Here's my answer to that. Maybe the temperature and humidity outside your home happen to be in an ideal range for healthy indoor air. That does happen sometimes, but in most of the US and honestly most of the world, that's only true in a limited number of places for a limited time each year. More likely, the reason opening your windows doesn't seem to impact your indoor climate is that not that much fresh air is actually coming in. I've lived in a lot of different buildings and tested a lot of different buildings, and some of them didn't generate good cross breezes at all. If only a small amount of outdoor air is trickling in, it's not enough to significantly change indoor temperature and humidity, but it's also not enough to meaningfully improve air quality either. Another problem with window opening is that outdoor generated particle counts are often higher than indoors. So particulate that comes from outside of your home, like from industrial emissions. Get a particle counter and test it for yourself like I did in this video. So while opening windows does dilute VOCs and CO2, it usually increases your home's total particle count. And depending on where you live, it may even introduce harmful gases like pesticide fumes from a neighbor's yard. So if opening windows isn't a reliable ventilation strategy, is there a better option? Well, before I tell you, I wanna say this. For me, air quality isn't just a casual concern. It's the difference between feeling okay and feeling not good. If a strategy doesn't work, my body tends to let me know. That's why I don't rely on guesswork. I need something that actually works really well. A system that brings in fresh air consistently without disrupting indoor conditions. That's why I use an energy recovery ventilator, or ERV. Not only does it provide steady ventilation, but it also allows you to filter incoming air, which is especially important during periods of poor outdoor air quality. But the best part is that ERVs bring in fresh air at close to room temperature. Even if it's very cold or hot outside, they also regulate humidity, removing excess humidity from the incoming air in the summer and retaining indoor humidity in the winter. This ensures that lots of fresh air can be introduced year round without making your home too humid or too dry. Here's another ERV benefit. Unlike other mechanical ventilation methods like bathroom exhaust and whole house ventilation fans, ERVs don't cause pressure imbalances in your home. For instance, if you run a bathroom exhaust fan for prolonged periods, the negative pressure it creates can pull air from contaminated spaces like damp crawl spaces. It can also pull humid outdoor air into wall cavities, where it condenses on cold surfaces and promotes mold growth. So ERVs prevent all that. In the SIRS or mold illness community, there's this idea that if your sensitivity gets severe enough, the only option is to live outside, like, like in a tent. I'm not denying that that can help, but is it really necessary? I mean, especially for someone with chronic illness who needs comfort and rest and relaxation, not survival camping. I mean, yes, fresh air is often necessary for people, but I don't believe you have to live outside in order to get enough of it. An ERV can bring in enough fresh air that you may not have to take such extreme measures. For people like me who are managing biotoxin illnesses like SIRS and multiple chemical sensitivity, ERVs can make a huge difference. You can even use more than one if you need, like I use one downstairs and one upstairs. Anyway, if you're interested in getting an ERV, I've made a DIY installation video that walks you through setting it up in a window, just like a portable AC unit. I know this might seem like kind of a lot, but on this channel, I don't recommend gimmicky shortcuts. I focus on what actually works really well. If you truly want clean air, it takes some setup, but the difference is absolutely worth it. And by the way, I'm not sponsored by any ERV companies and I make no money from you buying one. I wish I did, by the way. I'm, I'm trying to pivot to doing this healthy home guide stuff full time, but I, I have a ways to go. So how do you tell if you're bringing in enough fresh air? Use a CO2 monitor like this one. CO2 concentration should at the very least be below 1,000 parts per million, but it's better to have it below 800 and best to have it below 600. I'm gonna read your mind again now. So you might be thinking, wait, are you saying I can never ever open a window again? Of course not. If the temperature and humidity outside are comfortable and the air quality is good, or you absolutely need fresh air and you have no other options, open your windows, fine. 
I occasionally supplement my ERVs with window opening when conditions are right, just to really blast the space with fresh air. So let's say you're sold on the benefits of a fresh air intake system, but you're worried about bringing in outdoor gases like from pesticides, wildfire smoke, ozone, etc. In my next video that's coming out in a week or two, so subscribe so you don't miss it, I'll show you exactly how to bring in fresh air without bringing in harmful VOCs. Anyway, thanks for watching.